All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the train animate down the track with the wheels spinning. It's a little bit alternative to the way that uh, a lot of people are doing it, um, but we're going to animate this um, a little bit different way. So the first thing that we need to do, see this is all constrained down to the track except for the back part. So we're going to go to constrain, and we're going to do a flush on the back, back of the train, back of the track, hit apply, and that should be good. Now, our wheels should still be able to move at this point. And you notice, I don't know if you saw that little glitch right there, that sometimes these wheels get a little off where they one's up and one's down. So we're going to fix that by placing some angle constraints. So I'm going to go to Constrain, Angle. And you need to make sure that you select this single solution or this directed angle right here. So we're going to click on that. And I'm just going to click on Zoom In and click on this spoke here come over to the other train wheel and click on that spoke there and now that'll keep those at the same angle so that when I rotate those they don't get off set of one another um, and they get jammed so we're gonna do this wheel to the back of the train so we're doing the two sides and then we're gonna go from here that spoke we're gonna go around to the other side and it's gonna take me a second to rotate around here and click that corner and then zoom back in find this guy. So we're going to go from the top spoke over there to one of these spokes over here. And that sets this side up. All right, the last thing to do on angle constraints is to go from here to this front wheel. And now all of our wheels should be locked in place. None of them should move. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this other wheel on the left side and zoom in a little bit. And what we're going to do is we have an angle constraint between here and the back of the train. And that's the one that we're going to drive. So if I click on the train and come over here and highlight the train body, go down to angle 2. I'm going to right click on this and hit drive. And I'm going to drive this from 0 to 360 degrees. And let's watch what happens. So it goes around. This one's actually going backwards. So I'll want to rewind this and play the other direction. And so now they're going forwards. You can see that the, the wheels are moving, but it, it's still not moving forwards on the track. All right. So now that we have the wheels moving, we need to set up a relationship between this angle and how far forward it should move down the track. So we're going to go into the flush constraint between the train body and the back of the track here. And I'm going to change this um, a couple things here. So we're going to put a formula in this flush constraint. But this angle 2, we need to name this something. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this from 0 degrees to 100 degrees. And you'll see why I want to do that in a second. Up here in the upper part of your toolbar, there's an f of x that sets up formulas, parameters. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go down it and look for that new 100, angle, 100 degree angle um, constraints. And I'm going to name that, just like you would in math class. I'm going to name that as a variable. And I'm going to call this variable crank. Okay, so there's my 100 degrees, there's my crank, I named it, I can hit done. So I'm done with this. So now I can take this angle back to 0 degrees and set up this flush constraint here between the back of the train and the back of the track. And I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to type in a formula here. And what we're going to do is we are going to use the circumference of this wheel as a portion of how far around this goes. So to find the circumference of the wheel, it's pi times diameter, so the diameter of this wheel is 2.25 inches. And you see it's already starting to move that train forward. 2.25 inches times pi, 3.14. And so that should be one revolution of that wheel. All right, so when it's zero degrees, it'd be back here. Once we've gone around 360 degrees, it should be up here. But we need to relate this to that crank, and we need to relate it to the proportion uh, that the uh, wheel has gone around um, to the to the how far it should move down the track. So we're going to multiply this times crank divided by 360 degrees. And now it came back to the beginning because crank right now is set to be zero. So zero of 360 should be zero inches, right? So if we moved one degree, that'd be one 360th of a revolution or one 360th of the circumference that it should move down the track. All right, so this crank and the 360 degrees is a proportion of how far it should move forward of that circumference. So I'm going to click OK here. And now I have that crank, that motion of the wheel, um, related to how far it should move down the track. So if I go back to this angle constraint, 
right here between the wheel and the train. And I like to rename this, you know, something descriptive like drive me or um, something like that. So I'm going to right click now and hit drive and I can hit play. And we're kind of moonwalking here. So it's moving forward, but things are going, the wheels are going the opposite direction. So I'm going to have to do a couple little things here. We're going to put a negative here. So we're going to drive this from 0 to negative 360. And now we're moving, the wheels are moving the right direction, but I'm still going backwards. So I'm going to hit OK here. And I'm going to go back into my flush and edit this and put in a negative crank here. So we just have some signs issues to fix. And you can see it moved forward now. So now when I go to drive me, drive, I can go from 0 to negative 360. So I'm going to back it up and I'm going to hit play. And now it's moving the correct directions. And that's how you move that down the track.